and I am the devil himself. Let me ask you a question. How do you like your steak cooked? For me personally, I prefer it medium. But did you know that the least favorite cooking temperature is rare? However, rarity isn't always a bad thing. Take, for example, some entrance theme music in AEW, because there have been certain special songs that have only ever been played once or twice, and then they're never heard again. But can you tell me which ones were they? Well, that being said, I'm Kevin Callis. This is Wrestling Behind the Themes. Please go ahead and subscribe, because here are 10 rare. AEW theme songs you never heard again. Y'all ready for this? During the special 2021 Fight for the Fallen edition of AEW Dynamite, the Elite battled their former BFF, Hangman Adam Page, and his misfit buddies, The Dark Order, in a five-on-five elimination match. Wearing Space Jam-themed Toon Squad uniforms, the Elites made their entrance that night to this legendary ESPN jock jam by the dance group 2 Unlimited called Get Ready For This. Now for this one shining moment, it was revealed on an episode of Being the Elite that the Young Bucks ponied up $50,000 for the rights to use this song, which you have to consider as Looney Tunes since the track was only used for one night only. But I guess when you're a couple of VVPs and you spend money like water on sneakers you can run the joint however you so choose overshadowed by the debacle that was the brawl out at all out 2021 when cm punk went off the rails MJF made his shocking return to AEW for the first time in more than three months since Max seemingly went off the rails himself in his own passionate pipe bomb-esque promo back on the June 1st episode of Dynamite. Billed as the Joker for the PPV's opening casino ladder match, Max arrived in a sick-looking white devil mask and strolled to the ring as the sinister Rolling Stones hit Sympathy for the Devil rocked the speakers. With its powerful hypnotic groove, and Mick Jagger's masterful lyrics, this tune was fittingly appropriate for MJF's character. But you gotta think AEW paid a pretty penny for the licensing rights to play the song only one time. Fans at the special AEW Grand Slam show at Arthur Ashe Stadium in 2021 were sent home happy as veteran wrestling journeyman and New York City's own Homicide made a surprise appearance helping out John Moxley and Eddie Kingston in their Lights Out main event match against Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki. Now Suzuki Gun were in control with Archer set to put Kingston through a chair with blackout. But before the murder hawk monster could hit the move, this theme music began blaring as the notorious 187 hit the ring just in time. Passing out weapons to Mox and the Mad King, turns out this one-time showing was a complete shot to Homicide, who just showed up backstage to hang out with his buddies and watch, not knowing they wanted to include him in this historic event. While the company has come a long way in a very short period of time, AEW is still the new kid on the block of wrestling promotions. In fact, it's pretty hard to imagine that their first pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, only just happened in May of 2019. And it was at this inaugural event that the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be made a surprise cameo appearance to unveil the AEW World Championship belt. To date, this was the Hitman's only appearance in AEW and the only time we've heard this rare entrance theme. A pretty cool moment and a huge get for the upstart company. According to Dave Meltzer and Wrestling Observer Radio, the Hitman has not made any other All Elite appearances due to being worried about having heat with Vince McMahon. I guess Brett didn't want to make a stink because he was concerned they might just punish Natalya and give her back her passing gas gimmick again.
In another surprise debut, this time at Full Gear in November 2021, former two-time Ring of Honor World Champion Jay Lethal was introduced as the latest wrestling superstar to become All Elite. Arriving at the pay-per-view with a new remixed version of Randy Savage's theme song in tow titled Stomp and Circumstance, those with a keen ear for detail may have noticed that as Lethal made his in-ring debut versus Sammy Guevara on the post-Full Gear edition of Dynamite a few days days later that the greatest first generation wrestler had already undergone a change in the entrance music department. Stop and Circumstance was replaced with Lethal Injection. And the reason for the switch that has been explained to us is that Jay requested a Static X inspired theme to harken back to his indie days. You can always count on professional wrestling to celebrate every single holiday you can imagine. But Halloween and wrestling have been a perfect pair for decades. All Hallows Eve is the perfect time to go all out, and that's exactly what AE Dub did in 2021. On a special Halloween episode of Dynamite, the Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Adam Cole Bebe dressed as the classic Ghostbusters for their eight-man tag team main event versus the Dark Order again. And while they may not have been able to cross their streams and bust any ghosts with their proton packs, the supergroup's entrance that night did come correct, with the famous Ghostbusters theme remixed for copyright purposes, of course. Created by AEW musical maestro Mikey Ruckus, on just two hours' notice, mind you. So now you know if you need a song fast, it's pretty obvious who you're gonna call. The Dark Order have come a long way since their AEW debut, going from a team with massive go-away heat to one of the most beloved factions in All Elite Wrestling. And their subsequent friendship with Hangman Adam Page after his falling out with the Elite has been paramount to Hangman's ever-evolving character development. Although Page is not an official member, they all support each other and have each other's backs when needed. And this storyline seemed to all culminate at the aforementioned 2021 fight for the fallen as Hangman and the Dark Order made their way to the ring together as an outlaw posse and arriving to a spine-tingling remix version of Page's original theme by Vincent Padula called Hangman's Tale. So much attention to detail to dissect in this entrance that was just on another level of hype is just one of the many reasons fans appreciate what AEW does and stands for. Kenny Omega teamed up with his buddies, the Young Bucks, in a trios match versus the Hybrid 2 and Kip Sabian. Now, the Bucks showed up to the ring dressed in Street Fighter costumes, while Kenny cosplayed as everyone's favorite me gunner, Sans from Undertale. Now, Undertale, as an RPG, has a ton of memorable elements. However, one song that stands out in particular is one of gaming's most iconic final boss battle themes, Toby Fox's instantly recognizable Megalovania, which accompanied Kenny to the ring that night as he basked in all his gamer geek glory. NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal is no stranger to the squared circle. Having hosted an episode of Monday Night Raw before, and as a participant in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 32. So when it was announced that the 48-year-old Shaq Diesel was going to be making his AEW debut, fans' expectations were through the roof, and the big man delivered as he and Jade Cargill put a Shaq Fu whooping on Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet in a high-impact mixed tag team match. Now, for those of you perhaps thinking that Shaq's entrance theme would have been from one of his movies like Kazam or Steel, you were sadly mistaken. Mikey Ruckus produced another all-star jam with this epic slam dunk. And while this wasn't the exact theme that Shaq used, this was the version that was ready to go up until it was tweaked a mere 10 minutes before the match. Talk about a buzzer beater for the Ruckus one.
Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that Paul Heyman has always been a fan of Chris Jericho and that he decided to bring Lionheart to Extreme Championship Wrestling in the mid-1990s after speaking with hardcore legend Mick Foley, whose positive recommendation opened the Bingo Hall Forbidden Door for the last survivor of the Hart Family Dungeon to become an instant favorite with the EC Dub audience. Also helping Chris develop a new edge to his teeny bopper heartthrob character was this white zombie banger, which showed off Jericho's grit and intestinal fortitude in becoming more than just a pretty face for the fans. And whenever Jericho has reprised this version of himself in AEW, this theme is the one that's always kicking out the jams.